three bizarre true crimes. The Circleville Letters mystery began in 1976 in Circleville, Ohio, a small, unassuming town. This series of events unfolded over several years and involved numerous residents, but the primary target was Mary Gillespie. Mary Gillespie was a school bus driver in Circleville. The unsettling sequence began when she and other residents started receiving anonymous letters postmarked from nearby Columbus. These letters contained detailed personal information and accusations. Mary's letters accused her of having an affair with the superintendent of the local schools, which she denied. The situation escalated when Mary's husband, Ron Gillespie, received a letter demanding he confront his wife about the alleged affair. The anonymous author threatened dire consequences if he failed to act. The letters continued, growing more threatening and accusatory, spreading fear and suspicion among the community. On August 19, 1977, Ron received a phone call that seemed to confirm the identity of the letter writer. Enraged, he took his gun and drove off, only to be found dead later in a single car accident. The circumstances were suspicious. His gun had been fired once and he was found to have a high blood alcohol level, though family and friends insisted he was not a heavy drinker. Despite Ron's death, the letters did not stop. Instead, they increased in frequency and malice, targeting more people in the community and spreading further accusations and threats. Signs accusing Mary of the affair began appearing along her bus route. In one instance, she stopped to remove a sign and found a booby trap designed to fire a gun at her. Though she was unharmed, the incident marked a terrifying escalation in the campaign of harassment. Paul Freshour, Ron Gillespie's brother-in-law and Mary's former brother-in-law, became a suspect in the case, especially after a gun found in the booby trap was linked to him. In 1983, he was tried and convicted for attempted murder, primarily due to handwriting analysis linking him to the letters in the booby trap. However, he maintained his innocence and many people, including some victims of the letters, doubted his guilt. Freshour's conviction did not stop the letters. They continued to arrive, even while he was in solitary confinement, leading many to question whether the right person had been arrested. Freshour himself received a letter while in prison, taunting him. Paul Freshour was released from prison in 1994, but continued to work to clear his name until his death in 2012. The letters gradually ceased, but the mystery surrounding their authorship and the true motives behind them remain unsolved. The case was featured on Unsolved Mysteries and other true crime shows, but no conclusive evidence has ever emerged to definitively solve the case. The Circleville Letters case remains one of the most perplexing unsolved mysteries, a chilling reminder of how fear and anonymity can disrupt the lives of a small community. The identity of the letter writer, the truth behind the accusations, and the full extent of the events remain unknown to this day. This story takes place in Greenbrier County, West Virginia, in the late 19th century and revolves around the mysterious death of a young woman named Elva Zona Heaster. Elva Zona Heaster married Erasmus, also known as Edward, Shue in 1896. Shue was a blacksmith with a murky past, having moved to Greenbrier County to start anew. Their marriage seemed ordinary until January 23, 1897, when Zona was found dead in her home. She was discovered lying on the floor, eyes wide open and a strange look on her face. Initially, her death was presumed to be of natural causes declared as everlasting faint and later changed to complications from pregnancy. However, Zona's mother, Mary Jane Heaster, was convinced that foul play was involved. She claimed that Zona's spirit visited her over four consecutive nights to reveal the true cause of her death she had been strangled by Shu. Bolstered by her conviction and the alleged spectral visits, 
Mary Jane Heaster convinced the local prosecutor to exhume Zona's body for an autopsy. This was an unusual decision, especially for the time, and it was heavily influenced by her persistent claims and public pressure. The autopsy revealed that Zona had a broken neck and signs of strangulation contradicting the initial findings of natural causes. This evidence led to the arrest and trial of Edward Shue for the murder of his wife. During the trial, the prosecutor avoided mentioning the ghost story for fear of undermining the case. However, the defense brought it up, presumably to discredit Mary Jane Heaster. Surprisingly, this backfired, as many locals seemed to believe the ghost testimony, even though it was technically hearsay from a supernatural source. Ultimately, Shu was found guilty, largely based on the physical evidence and his own suspicious behavior, rather than the ghostly testimony. He was sentenced to life in prison where he died three years later. The Greenbrier ghost is notable for being one of the only cases in American legal history where the testimony of a ghost helped sway a trial. While the spectral evidence was not directly cited in court, it played a significant role in bringing attention to the case and prompting the re-examination of Zona's death. The story remains a peculiar blend of folklore, justice, and the unexplained, continuing to intrigue and mystify people to this day. The Velisca Axe Murders is another haunting and unsolved case from the early 20th century. This brutal crime took place in the small town of Villisca, Iowa, in the United States, and remains one of the most disturbing unsolved murders in American history. On the night of June 9, 1912, the Moore family, including parents Josiah B. and Sarah Moore, their four children, and two visiting friends, Ina and Lena Stillinger, settled into the Moore residence after attending a church event. The following morning, when a neighbor noticed that the Moore household was unusually quiet and that chores had not been done, concern grew. Eventually, the Moore family's neighbor, Mary Peckham, initiated a welfare check. The town's peace officer and a few townsfolk entered the home, discovering a gruesome scene. All eight occupants of the house had been bludgeoned to death with an axe, which was left at the scene. The investigation revealed chilling details. Mirrors and windows in the house were covered with cloths and garments. All the victims' skulls had been crushed as they slept, and the killer or killers had remained in the house for hours after the murders, evidenced by a plate of uneaten food and a bowl of bloody water. Despite a significant investigation that included several suspects and even a few confessions, no one was ever convicted of the crimes. The motives and the identity of the killer or killers have remained a mystery. Over the years, several theories have been proposed, ranging from a random act of a transient serial killer to personal vendettas against Josiah Moore, but none have ever been proven. The Velisca Axe Murder House has been preserved as a historical site and is known for its supposed paranormal activity, drawing visitors and ghost hunters from around the country. The case has also been the subject of numerous books, documentaries, and investigations, yet the murders remain unsolved, leaving a haunting legacy on the small Iowa town. The Villisca Axe murders stand out not only for their brutality, but also for the mystery that has surrounded them for over a century, with the question of who committed this heinous crime remaining unanswered. Make sure to like and subscribe for more stories.